Dear Shiva Prabhupada, O glorious Master, I was lost in this material world, aimlessly wandering around until you came into my life. You opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge, and you have been guiding me almost 50 years. As I look back at my struggle journey, you have never ceased to shine that light of knowledge filled with compassion. I am eternally grateful and indebted to you. Thank you. You came to the U.S. in 1965 at the age of 69. You were two years older than I am now. Your energy understands you. I have a hard time driving from Statesville to here, just only a little over 100 miles. But in the 11 years that you were here before your death, you traveled the world over 14 times. You preached that this is a personal um, philosophy, and that we all have a relationship with that. And then over the last couple of weeks, I've come to realize what you mean. You can't book someone unless you know them. So thank you for giving us your books, and for creating these temples, and for the love of your disciples. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. the Devi Guru Puja at the temple, and meditating on the very deep meaning of the beautiful song by Shri Narodham Dasaku. The first line speaks about attaining pure devotional service by the mercy of your lotus feet. Service, I understand. Devotional service, I sort of understand and desire. But pure devotional service always seems so far away from me to even consider to attain. It is interesting to see that in the index of your biography as it is, there are three four pages and a quarter in reference to devotional service, and only a quarter of a page refers to pure devotional service. And, and you taught us in your transition of nectar of devotion that it is indeed rarely attained. Nonetheless, this is the only thing that attracts your Krishna. And it is becoming attractive to my little fallen self too. It is becoming obvious by your mercy and Krishna's mercy that nothing else will really satisfy your soul but pure love for Krishna, manifesting as pure devotional service. I'm so grateful that when you were on the planet, you expressed your great pleasure when you tried hard to go out and sign the It took me decades to actually want to assist you in giving Lord Chaitanya's mercy to souls and trapped in this material world. But now, when I go out, even though just a couple of hours because of old age, I experience a level of loving exchanges between the fallen souls and Krishna that is simply wonderful to witness. And I'm very happy to be your little instrument of mercy. I'm praying to be able to go out and thank you time for a few more years, Krishna will Thank you unlimitedly for that very dear service and for all the wonderful devotees who, help, who are helping me to do it in so many different ways and for so many years. She gives us a thank you, Dear Shri Prabhupada, bowing down to you, placing this head, these hands, this heart, these legs before you, all that is thought, all that is heard, all that is tasted, all that is spoken, all that is felt, all that is held, all that is given. Every goal, every destination, every smile, every tear. When will all be only for you? Who are so dear to Krishna, 
who brings happiness to Christians, who gives shelter to all, eternal loving service, who is dear, who graces this earth. O oh, beautiful Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sri Prabhupada, taking shelter of you, servant of this divine grace, Sri Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Gautami Prabhupada, giver of Lord Chaitanya's message, giver of Lord Chaitanya's transcendental loving service, pure unalloyed devotional service. You, Sri Prabhupada, are delivering this whole world the message, a light in the darkness, a great rain cloud of mercy of Krishna. In this forest fire where we are, we're all running here and there so furiously, not knowing where we came from, not knowing what we were doing here, not knowing where we were going, lost and terrified, confused and hopeless, frustrated and illusioned. Now peaceful, hopeful, enthusiastic, with clarity we now know, Krishna is his name, Vrindavan is his place, Tribhumdi is his form. The Sarabhi cows long to see him and be touched by him. His servants rise each day to bathe him and dress him and feed him. Subal, Sridhar, and Madhumanga are his dear most friends. Yashoda is his mother, Nanda Maharaj is his father. Shimati Radharani is his topmost devotee, and you should have brought by his divine grace. And we are your eternal servants. We take shelter of your lotus feet. We take shelter of your orders. We take shelter of your books. We take shelter of your service. We take shelter of your disciples. We take shelter of your Islam. We take shelter of your merciful glance. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. I am very grateful to be here uh, without the mercy of Sri Prabhupada. I would have been here. And when I, every day when I open and see the news, I always think, you know, how words of God have been without Sri Prabhupada. You know, we see nowadays the, the violence that is being done by him different elements it is so uh, disturbing but again we take shelter in your teachings in your vani and all and then we understand how this material world is it's always in constant flux changing and we see how the anti-social elements are rising because they are challenging the consciousness that we have given to this world and the more we this uh, Krishna consciousness movement spreads, the more we can see that there are anti-social elements coming out and trying to challenge us. But by sticking to this process that we have given, I know we will surely win over the hearts of all the people in the world. And that will create a real peace in this world for everybody, including animals and plants as well. So thank you so much for giving Krishna consciousness to this whole world, Prabhupada. I am very grateful. And starting from me, I can see how you have taught everybody at individual level how to take care of themselves, health-wise. You taught us, you are teaching us how to do sadhana. You are teaching us how to hear the transcendental message and from where to hear the pure Krishna Krishnamta. And you, have, you are teaching us how to share this, this valuable knowledge of love with everybody in this world. Hopefully, we will attain peace in this world where everybody can joyfully perform Sankirtan. So thank you so much for everything, Shri Prabhupada. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. Happy Vaishnava Dharma. 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 Just after Lord Krishna's appearance day. This always I wonder that you choose to appear next to Krishna's and you choose to disappear in the month of Kartik, which is considered to be Radharani's. This makes me think that you are standing in between them and you are holding and they are holding your hands 
just like the father and the mother would hold the hands of the child. And then the child smiles so beautifully. And this reminds me of seeing your beautiful and the contagious smile. Also, when both the mother and the father holds the hands of the child, the child sometimes jumps up and does all sorts of gymnastics. My personal experience, bro. As he is, he is also fearless. Probably that is why your name is Abhay And you are fearfully performing all astounding miracles we all know about. And one of your miracles is me, Prabhupada. I genuinely think I'm surely one of your miracles. Prabhupada, I always wonder, are you more merciful or not Krishna? Krishna appeared. He did his extraordinary pastimes. He sends his beautiful name, his beautiful books, and then he sends you. So, are you more merciful or not Krishna more merciful? But then I remember there is always this transcendental competition between the devotees and Krishna and Krishna himself. When Radharani looks at Krishna, who is very beautiful, she becomes more beautiful. Then Krishna, seeing Radharani becoming more beautiful, he increases his more beauty. So there is always this increasing qualities in both of them. So in the same competition between you and Krishna, you know, where who is more merciful, I am very much getting benefited. I am really enjoying this competition between you and Krishna. Who would say this girl? Me or you? Me or no, you, me, me, you. No problem. I am enjoying this program because I know this for a fact. Jagata Vichare Kichu Nahi Pai Kumari Purnasha. Thank you, Prabhupada, for giving me the access to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his most transcendental associates and finally giving me shelter at your home, Sri Dham Mayapur. Your eternally grateful granddaughter, Dilimita Gila Dilimita. I want to thank everybody so far. All the offerings are really just like the right length, and they're really wonderful. So they've been so sweet so far, and they're, as I say, they're all right. <laughs> okay, uh, Rudra. Dear Shabrapa, without you, without you, I cannot say we, but I can say I am nothing. I'm nothing. Absolutely nothing. There are so many philosophies. There are so many religions, there are so many understandings of what mind is, and some of them carry some truth, and some of them carry a great deal of truth. Not that um, the practitioners necessarily represent that truth, but your philosophy, the fact that you are a true servant of the Supreme Lord in a very intimate situation, is showing us the perfect philosophy. So, how can we possibly ever repay the gift that you have given us through your um, appointees or gurus? So we don't have personal um, initiation from you to have it through somebody that you think commission, you have permission help. So, uh, the, the, the fact that we are, or I am, uh, intelligent, to uh, should propel me to become every second of my existence, which is not unfortunately happening, more and more dedicated to the service of your instructions, to the service of Shijitana, to the service of uh, the Supreme Couple, Shijitana and Krishna. We are extremely fortunate to live in this community to have this amazing temple, this beautiful place, and the guidance of the Krishna Maharaj, who is the architect of this, the, this presence, the presence of this place in which we are all taking shelter. Thank you so very much, Yabhava. We love you most, Yabhava. Thank you for translating. My father Tom, which is the most profound book in the world. And uh, uh, you can also see 
and I, as everybody said, I want to echo that what, where I would be if I would be not in this association. I would be confused in this material ocean. And even though there are scriptures, we have read about it, but to do it in a level so that we can actually also have a loving devotional service to Supreme Lord Krishna, to all the Vaishnava devotees, is an exemplary thing that you have provided us in our lives. And I'm very thankful to provide us um, um, like the guru so that our next generation can learn and move ahead on Krishna conscious philosophy and then take it forward. And on an appearance day, I wanted to dedicate myself and my family in, in serving you in whatever capacity it is possible and, and also uh, spiritually advancing in my life. Thank you very much, Shlabhupa. Shlabhupa, Rabha, Kiyaya. Dear Shlabhupa, our glory to you. Honestly, I have no words to express my feelings about your grace, service to your Guru Maharaj, to Krishna, and to all the human society. I don't have words to express how wonderful you are, how amazing you are, how many lives you save, including myself. I just have to say, Please keep engaged in the silver forever. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It's hard to express, but 
kind of self I could be an internal servant to uh, show the call of God in this wherever it is, in this world, in another world, wherever it is, I just pray I can always be a service to show the call of God. Dear Shila Prabhupada, as my father was saying, words cannot express what every 100,000, 200,000 words in various different dictionaries in the English language. Put them all together in the most eloquent ways. I don't feel they will ever do justice because what you did was out of any material language, out of any anything related to the material world. You went straight to the spiritual essence. You brought the essence, you brought the vibrations of the spiritual world to all of us. And we are so, so fortunate to be able to experience the sweetness that you have given us. Just so beautiful Krishna consciousness. It's, it's the place where we feel a sense of belonging. It's the place where we are all are actually meant to be. Which is why we feel that sense of belonging. And you came at such an old age, facing so many obstacles. You came to give that to us. Because you wanted us to experience that. You didn't want to just experience that yourself. You had that mercy. You had that desire to bring it to all of us. And how, how grateful we are, and how much we sometimes take that for granted, just cannot be expressed because there's no words, there's, there's nothing to express that gratitude for bringing that highest truth, the highest goal of life, the, the soul place, the highest truth possible you brought to us. It's unimaginable. Unimaginable. You were the real, the real philanthropist, as you used to say. There's mundane philanthropy you won't take us anywhere. The real person. You gave us the real charity, the highest truth, the highest truth. And no matter how much I go on saying that I'm grateful, it will never be enough. And no matter how much I try my best in this life to serve under the guidance of your disciples, especially Gurudev, and all the various different senior devotees. I just wish to serve and serve and serve to the extent that you'll be happy, because you're merciful and I know you'll be happy. But at the same time, I'll never be able to pay this debt. Srila Prabhupada, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to read what um, I have written for the Jiyas Puja book. And this is a collective um, offering from all of the <coughs> servants here at New Look. Dearest Srila Prabhupada, Namo Vishnu Vidai Krishna Pisai Mutale Shri Mate Pati Vedanta Swami Dinami Namaste Sati Dorukani Jami. Please accept our most heartfelt and humble obeisances. All glories to your divine and cooling lotus feet. The League of Devotees cooperatively serving at Nikoloka Dam are reaching out and examining within more than ever before. We can all understand this by witnessing and experiencing the high level of devotion that is being exhibited in one another's respective services. Both near and far, many surrendered souls have visited our home temple and sought service, solace, and shelter. We are also grateful that you have built this house for us to live in. Whenever we travel around the world, we feel sheltered and peaceful. When we arrive at one of your spiritual portals, which are so necessary in this material world, we are actively trying our best to reach out to others and share all information about the wonderful process you gave to the world on the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chanting, dancing, feasting, not a difficult process at all. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. We are all very grateful for the shelter you've extended to us. 
as we try to connect with you through service, of which chanting the Maha Mantra is foremost, we try to remember that compassion starts with ourselves. As we attempt to share Krishna with others by chanting his names, we pray that you will empower us to carry on your mission authentically. Your loving and compassionate care. Oops. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, right on, here. it's online. Okay, I found it. Sorry. Your loving and compassionate care of each and every living entity is revolutionary and should open our hearts to giving unlimitedly. Please grant us the boon of easily connecting with every living entity to share the names of Krishna. Your shining example as the topmost Vaishnava is our beacon in this chaotic world of threefold miseries. We may breathe a collective sigh of relief as we access and imbibe your teachings, instructions, and mood, which affords us the opportunity to associate with you on the spiritual platform. Such valuable treasures we have been gifted and now hold in our intelligence and hearts. It seems there is no chance of repaying this enormous debt, dear Sri Prabhupada. We can simply use our time wisely and offer 100% of our body, mind, and words to you, birth after birth. We are very enthusiastic to receive your continued blessings and guidance as we navigate this journey. We are forever grateful to you for your monumental sacrifice to redirect our lives and efforts towards Krishna. And we sincerely pray that you will recommend these sincere servants to Lord Gauranga and Lord Nityananda so that they may reveal the spiritual world to us as they have done for you, your Ashira Prabhupada. Your humble servant, Yoshakti Devi Dasi, and Yogaloka Dham Ki Jai. Yoshita Prabhupada. This is set my most humble obeisances. I was going to you. Shri Prabhupada, you appear uh, in this world in 1896. In the 1920s, you received instruction from Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, your spiritual master, to come to the West to bring Krishna consciousness to the fallen conditioned souls of the Western world. In 1965, you appeared following those instructions after great difficulty, great sacrifice, you appeared in the Western world, carrying with you in your heart, in your mind, and your aging body those instructions for which you dedicated your life. 1967, I had the great and fathomable opportunity to have your darshan, San Francisco. It was in a great hall with about 2,000 young people including myself. You led a kirtan and <clears throat> you transformed that atmosphere of that place uh, into a spiritual abode. I had the experience that moment of what it was like to be free from the influence of the modes of material nature. And I couldn't turn back from that. That one experience uh, went so deep that everything else paled by comparison. It took some time for myself to finally yield myself fully uh, to your lotus feet in service. In 1971, you 
granted me a name and instructed me in the process of devotional service. So, since then, Manashas Indriyani Prakriti and Prashati I am struggling with the mind and the senses. But I know that from that moment in 1967 that my path in this life and perhaps many lives to come is 100% fixed in your service. So that uh, has given me purpose. And I have to say, Srila Prabhupada, that although I long for your association and for that experience that I had in 1967 once again, which was so powerful and so pure, that I am experiencing the same by being in the association of your devotees. And especially, I will say that this community of Nuk Loka is unique, I believe, in that uh, the mood of sacrifice, the mood of surrender, and the cooperation among the devotees here is very inspiring as I felt inspired by your association then throughout the time that we had your association through the 70s. I feel very much your association here because you are wherever the devotees are serving you uh, in a way that is without motivation and without interruption. And I thank you, Srila Prabhupada, for creating a movement in which uh, these flowers are emerging and beautifying the garden of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Krishna Prabhupada, I wanted to read an offering that um, my Guru Maharaj, your dear disciple, uh, His Holiness Bhakti Churu Maharaj, wrote in 1989. And um, I had come across this offering uh, shortly after he left this world, and it was very encouraging for me, and I just wanted to read that to you. Dear Shri Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances at your divine Buddha's feet. Once again, I am compelled to meditate upon you. Under the pretense of serving you, so often I drift away from your lotus feet. But your very merciful devotees always bring me back to your divine shelter. So often I want to offer myself completely to you, Srila Prabhupada, but helplessly I get deluded by Maya and forget my resolution. Remember the day you gave me initiation. At that time I was your personal servant. I used to be with you all the time. Therefore, that day I could not go out to collect my Guru Dakshin for you. I felt extremely bad that I did not collect anything to offer you. When everyone left the room, I was alone with you. I said, Shiva Prabhupada, you gave me Diksha, but I did not offer you any Dakshin as yet. You smiled and replied, you offer yourself, that is the best Dakshin. Submerged in an ocean of ecstasy, I offered you obeisances and prayed silently, Shiva Prabhupada, I am yours forever. Please accept me as your eternal servant. I offer you myself as my Guru Dakshi. When I got up, I found that your merciful eyes were fixed upon me, and your face was bright with your usual radiant smile. I felt that you had heard my prayer and accepted my Guru Dakshi. You accepted me, but how much of myself did I offer you? When I met you, you first asked me to offer this life to Krishna, and I resolved that I would. In your association, everything was so easy. In your presence, Maya could not spread her influence. You made us swim in an ocean of ecstasy. How wonderful were those days. All we wanted was just to be with you, to listen to you, to chant the holy name sitting close to you, or to massage your soft and pink lotus-like feet. Will those days ever come back? Will you come back in our midst, Srila Prabhupada? 
or shall we be transported due to some inconceivable good fortune to wherever you are? That day in Vrindavan I asked you, Shiva Prabhupada, should I serve the prasadam? You were reluctant to eat, but seeing me standing there, you agreed at least to sit in front of the plate. I helped you walk to the table and you sat down, but you did not have any appetite or the strength to eat. You just sat there with your hands folded on your lap. At last you said in a tired voice, you can see that I cannot eat. So why do you waste your time cooking for me when you have so much to do? From tomorrow you'd rather let someone else cook. Let someone else cook for me. I said, when you get better, Shiva Prabhupada, I will let someone else do that. But now, please let me cook for you. You replied, I will get better only when I die. My heart ached at the thought that soon you might leave us, and tears came streaming down my eyes. I tried to hide my face with my hands and bury it in my chest. In your deep, resonant voice, you kept on speaking. Someday we all have to leave this world, so why lament? You are not this body, nor am I, so why lament for something that we are not? Didn't I teach you that the soul doesn't die? Yes, Srila Prabhupada, now I realize that you did not leave us. It is a long way for us to go back to the spiritual world where we can associate with you eternally. But even in our minds, you are so much alive. Krishna wanted you to go back to him. Out of your causeless mercy, you came to remind us about Krishna and kindle the desire in our hearts to go back to him. But you were so dear to him that he could not bear your separation for too long, so he came back and took you back. And we, your helpless children, cry in speechless anguish. Although I know that you are always with us, still I cannot see you, touch you, or speak to you. Sometimes it seems that you are testing our eagerness to be with you. If we really want you, then we have to prove our love for you. You showered your love upon us. Now it is our turn to reciprocate. We have to put all the feelings in our hearts at your Buddha's feet. Very mercifully, you allowed me to associate with your Babu. Now let me serve your body. Let me realize that your instructions are non different from you. Your devotees are non different from you. Now let me see you through all that you have left behind to flood the world with the love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you really want to go, I can always see you. But it is more important that you see me, that I become aware that you are constantly watching me. I can feel the warmth of your merciful glance. I can hear your profound assurance. I am always with you. Just keep on rendering your service, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I know that if I, I know that if I just turn around, I will see you standing there just beside me. All I have to do is open my spiritual eyes. Desiring to remain engaged in the service of your lotus feet eternally, your most insignificant servant, Bhakti Chirus. Guru Dev Kripa Vindudiya. Goroe Dasi, Trina Pekka Atihina, Sakala Sahani Bala Tiyakora, Nija Man Mami Spriyahana. Gurudev, O spiritual master, give me, give to this servant just one drop of mercy. I am lower than the blade of grass. Give me all help, give me strength, let me be as you are, without desires or aspirations. O Prabhupada, this is my 50th celebration of your glorious appearance. You continue to shower mercy on your lowly servants and are gradually lifting me toward your devotion service. I offer you all respects, but thus I may have the energy to know you correctly. Then by chanting the holy name in great ecstasy, all my offenses will cease. O oh, Prabhupada, you, are so, you so mercifully initiated me into Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. Please bless me that I may someday chant the Lord's names purely. When will such mercy fall to this one who is weak and devoid of intelligence? Allow me to be with you. O oh, Prabhupada, you left our vision so soon after we, we met you. I was young and foolish. I didn't know how to associate with you. I beg to once again join you, preaching somewhere in the material world. But next time, please appear to me as a young man so I can serve you personally for many years. <laughs> If you examine me, you will find no qualities. Your mercy is all that I am made of. If you are not merciful to me, I can only weep. I will not be able to maintain my life. O oh, Prabhupada, my life has no meaning outside your Krishna Consciousness movement. Thank you for creating a beautiful spirit to Sangha. 
so that we can all have an association of saints and Christ members. Indeed, your mission is to build a house where everyone is welcome. I pray that I may carry on your mission for the rest of my days. Please allow me to shine the mercy you have shown to me, to other souls, languishing here in the material world, and invite them into the house of Bhakti. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Something a little kid plays with. 
And he said, no, these are, these are dolls illustrating a spiritual concept. And so he looked around the room, and all the artists had, had full engagements at that time. Mark was in charge of uh, BTG illustrations, and there were other boys in charge. John Arani was in charge of something else. Everybody was completely fully occupied. So Barry Gross looked around the room and he said, so who will go? And nobody said anything. And then Prabhupada uh, focused on Barry Gross and said, but it drives and you will go? And of course he couldn't refuse. He said, yes, Prabhupada, I'll go. And so Barry Gross and another devotee named Adi Dev went to India and they went through enormous austerities trying to learn the Indian method of making dolls, which was rice straw and different kinds of clay and so on, very, very unusual for Western type sculptors. But uh, they, they, they went, he, he eventually learned, in spite of getting malaria and other problems, and came back to the US and started a studio in Los Angeles. And I was uh, working for a wax museum at the time. But I was very impressed with Bargoj's dedication to this project, and he invited me to join up, and so I took the wax museum and joined up with Bargoj. And so we started a studio there uh, to design a museum in Los Angeles. I don't know how many of you have been to the LA Temple, but there's a museum called Fate, First American Theistic Exhibition. And it was all organized and, and structured by Bargoj. We had an amazing sculptor for this time. And so at one point when we were building this exhibition, Shiva Prabhupada came to visit the studio. And uh, this is one picture of Shiva Prabhupada. Um, and Bharadvaj is leading him around uh, the studio with other sannyasis following behind to Mount Krishna Maharaj and Ramakor. And, and uh, Harisari was there. Anyway, so Prabhupada toured around the uh, studio. Eventually, these are just a couple pictures of the, from the museum. I, I think there are 13 or 14 exhibits there. And uh, it, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, Bharadvaj organized this whole thing. And he, we had about 30 artists working and making exhibits. Anyway, changing bodies. And there's so many stories about these famous people came to see the museum and made comments. Bharat Raj explaining some of the dioramas to the I don't want to take too much time. I'm a little worried about cutting in on everybody here. But um, then Prabhupada kept walking around and he noticed another exhibit in the corner. And uh, this was actually for the first exhibit in, in the Theistic Exhibition. It was a, it was a Murti of Shiva Prabhupada in his room at the Radhagamadar Temple. So they recreated the whole room for Shiva Prabhupada. It was the first exhibit. And, uh, I, I built a little motor inside so that uh, when the sun comes up in the room, when you hear the peacocks, Prabhupada raised his head to look out the window. <laughs> so anyway, anyway Shri Prabhupada, Prabhupada turned his head and he noticed uh, something in the corner there. And um, finally he came in front with all the sannyasis behind him. And uh, this was his reaction. <laughs> he was place with the Smriti. <laughs> and while he was standing there, I pressed the button and broke my head I think that's why he started laughing like that. So I just wanted to explain that, and I wanted to explain um, that um, as Prabhupada was walking away, one devotee named Pita Das, Pita's right here, Pita Das overheard what Prabhupada said as he walked away from his murti. He said, we showed Shri Prabhupada the murti, he held himself, and when the head moved, Shri Prabhupada liked it very much. He said, now that you've done this, I will never leave. In this form, I'll sit on the Vyasa-san, 
and I'll always be with you. Thank you. Well, he us that his murky form was now different from him, and that he will always be present there. Did you see Papa's light flash yeah. as soon as he read the yeah. message yeah. that Papa yeah. said, I, he said, I'm present in my Morty, as yeah. soon as he yeah. was yeah. the message, the well, light That's flashed. definitely confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So every day after the morning program, we recite the Shishastic and And when we recite those prayers, I'm always meditating upon how you come and you're pouring this unlimited mercy upon all of the souls of the cloud. And we have become very dry, like a desert, and we keep pouring this rain. So I'm always praying that I can be fertile ground and that the seed of bhakti can flower there and that others could come and pick those flowers because you have engaged us in the same kirtan movement, which is not just meant to be doing our own solitude bhajan, but coming together with others to glorify you, and at the same time, um, taking your teachings to heart so that people will naturally be attracted. And the other verse that I meditate a lot on is Trinadapi Sinitma, Torapi Sihishna, Amani Gamadana Kirtanya Sarari. So I'm always hearing from people, like last night I saw many people that knew me since 39 years when I was here. And they remember I was running up and down the stairs. And now I'm having to have Divini Dalila find me and walk me home or you know, into like you give me a stick. And so these things actually are helping to um, take away that false pride of thinking that I can do something, but realizing that I'm completely dependent upon you and the mercy of the Vaishnavas and on your, on your instruction. So hearing that other devotees speak, it's so, it's so beautiful, it's so, so satisfying so satisfying to the heart. And I always reflect upon how a moment's association with a great devotee can free someone. And I've told devotees many times how I had your darshan in 1976. And just by seeing you, because I'm very dull, just by coming in your presence, hearing you speak, hearing you talk, it gave me the determination to somehow to keep going. And so actually, I beg all the devotees, please, to you know, free me of my offenses because I don't come from the same background as many of the people that are in our community now. They have such beautiful previous samskaras, and they're so nicely taken to devotional service. But for myself, there are some samskaras here that wouldn't be something I'd be attracted to. But if we just take shelter, we chant the Holy Name, and we associate with devotees, and we encourage each other, then those things, we don't have to meditate on them. We just meditate on what's positive in devotional service. So my three minutes is up. And the only reason, <laughs> the only reason I did realize it was up is that because I'm so used to the bell <laughs> meaning something's happening on the altar. So when you rang the seriously, when you rang the bell, I thought, oh, Krishna's having a nice lunch now. I hope he, I hope he enjoys it. So excuse me. I just identify the bell with the radical and I'm going to say that. Dear Shri Prabhupada, you are fulfilling the prediction of Lord Chaitanya that in every town and village the name of his spread. And I'm 
now over 600 Eastern temples in the holy name are being manifest. I want to confess that I was actually a very extremely fallen person following in the footsteps of Jagai Maharaj. But you being a direct expansion of Lord Nityananda's mercy have delivered countless Jagais and Maharaj. Now, with many diverse opinions, conflicts, and varieties of methodologies of ways to serve in this kind, I remember your instruction, quote, your love for me will be shown by how you cooperate together, and also that this kind can only be destroyed from within by an attack of Kali. So may we, on this your parents day be united in our dedication and service to you. One quick pastime that I remember very fondly uh, because uh, you always are teaching me lessons. I had the extreme opportunity to cook for you for one week when I was a brahmachari in Chicago. And I, one day, was um, speculating. One of the days that I was cooking, I invited a senior godfather of mine who I knew had cooked for you in New York, Rishi Kumar, to take one of my days to cook. And he cooked for you. But the next day, I heard from your your um, um, servant, Upendra Prabhu, that you were very disturbed. You didn't like it that I had transferred my service of cooking for you. And so I, I understand that instruction. And um, thank you so much. On this very special appearance day, I thank you that again you will give me the opportunity to cook for you and <laughs> experiencing your transcendental mercy. Jai Shri I have the biggest regret of my life is that I wasn't able to have physical darshan of Shri Prabhupada in spite of so many opportunities and uh, so that regrets remain with me and it will remain throughout my life. But we, I'm very grateful to you, Srila Prabhupada, that I know you through your books and uh, through your devotees and through the temples of the biggest house you created in this world. That is, that I can go any part of this world and can find a home in any temple throughout the world. This is amazing. And so Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> but I was able to associate with one of your disciples, Gopal uh, Krishna Goswami Maharaj, and who actually changed my life totally uh, in 1986. So, I just am ever thankful to you uh, for giving us this spiritual life, which in spite of being born in India, we wouldn't have known the details of what spiritual uh, path is. Always many Indians believed in many, many gods, and they didn't have any clue who the real God is. And it was only through your devotees that I was able to uh, ascertain that who your God is and that too in a foreign country like Canada, Vancouver. And so my, I, I miss you that way, but at the same time I, I have little uh, what you call um, uh, 
comfort uh, in a way that you came in my dreams. So I was able to associate that way. And uh, that was really comforting. And uh, in one of the dreams, he was walking with the um, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, and uh, he was walking with you, and you were walking in front of him. My Guru Maharaj was behind, and then you came back and said, okay, well, let's take this guy too. So I was so taken back by this, and this memory is actually in my heart, and it will remain so forever till I leave this world. Srila Prabhupada, other thing, but you will see permission I've been asked to, because my Guru Maharaj left uh, this year in uh, May. So because of that, I would like to read his uh, last offering to Srila Prabhupada. Hmm. So this was uh, Guru Maharaj's uh, uh, last offering. Uh, he says, Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my humble audiences at your divine lotus feet. This year we are celebrating your under 28th, 28th appearance anniversary because of your purity and determination. The Krishna Conscious Movement has spread to every corner of the world. In the purport to Chaitanya Chaitanya Adi Leela 7.164, you state, the Goswamis not only engaged in writing books, but also constructed temples because both are needed for preaching work. You told us that both book distribution and temple construction should continue side by side on parallel lines. In the next few days, on the auspicious occasion of Ram Nami, we are going to inaugurate new temple in Rohini, Delhi. You spent Considerable, considerable time in Delhi while residing at Radha Damodar's temple in Vrindavan. You regularly traveled to Delhi to get your books published and distribute them. As you did, have, did not have enough funds, you would travel to Mathura, to Delhi, in a third class compartment. After establishing Islam in the West, you returned to India to preach to Indians who had forgotten their Vedic culture. Your vision of Delhi focused on the fact that Delhi was the most important city in Asia. According to Tejas Das, who was president of Delhi Temple until 1976, Prabhupada wanted to do programs every week in different parts of Delhi. Prabhupada kept increasing his desire to have temples in Delhi from eight, and now it's 18 centers. He wanted to influence people to be invited to these programs. Prabhupada, by his, your causeless mercy, we have almost achieved the target you gave us between 1975 and 1977. I went with you to many locations to obtain land to build a temple. After long struggle, we obtained a very significant piece of land in South Delhi. Sri Sri Radha Partha Satyadevi's were first installed by you at Anandhaniketa in a rented facility. Later, they were moved to another rented house in Bengali market. Finally, a beautiful temple was built for the pleasure of the Lordship Sri Sri Radha Parthasarthi, Sri Sri Gauranetai, Sri Sri Sita Lakshman Hanuma. This project was inaugurated on Ramnami 1998 by late Prime Minister Sri Atal Dehari Pashtai, who praised you and your movement. Then we obtained a second temple in Punjabi Bhav. This temple also attracted thousands of Krishna conscious. Uh, gradually, you, your movement went on expanding the 
uh, and uh, expanding and 10 temples have been opened in different locations. Currently we have six major temples under construction. As I mentioned above, the Rohoni temple will be inaugurated on Nam 2024. Located on the main road, this temple is a grand artistic presentation. It will also be one of the temples where significant attention has been given to the details for the very first time Panchatukra Devis will be installed in India outside Bengal. Presently, we have temples under construction at Kurukshetra, Dwarka, Ghaziabad, and two other locations. By your possible mercy, we have achieved the target you gave, that of constructing temples and <clears throat> gradually growing from 8 to 18 temples in Delhi. Often devotees are amazed, amazed by the number of the temples we have in Delhi. But all this has been possible only by your purity and the tapasya you performed in Delhi. We are reaping the fruits of the seeds you have planted on this auspicious day. I beg you for your mercy that I may continue to serve you eternally. Uh, your eternal uh, servant in the Bhagavad Krishna I'd like to uh, piggyback on Advaita Chandra's offering because uh, presently I'm rereading the Srila Prabhupada Lila Mita after many years and it brings me to tears like Advaita mentioned if we could just remember what Srila Prabhupada went through to come here and how um, like we have no conception of poverty like that. After Srila Prabhupada left his family, we already know how they were uncooperative with him, not at all interested in assisting in the preaching. But um, he said, I'm leaving now. And they said, yeah, all right, because he left so many times. But this time, he wasn't coming back. So here he was, all alone, with no support. And he um, stayed in several Gaudiya Math temples. He would rent a room for five rupees a month. And, um, and then, what was his mission? OK, I know um, that my spiritual master asked me to speak in the English language. So after setting up something in Jansi, and having it totally fall apart, we can see Krishna's arrangement to push him forward. So after that, he just focused on writing. He said, I have to get to America somehow or another. And he had no money. And, um, and he would go to the printer. He was just saying, I want to go with some books so at least I can bring something there. And he worked on the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the printer, he said he would come here, he would often just um, take, he would put the papers on a, on a rickshaw and he would walk because it was too much to afford a rickshaw. And the printer said he, he usually didn't have any prashadam when he came, didn't even have money for food many times. And, um, <laughs> and we just can't conceive of the amount of poverty and then um, beseeching continuously, asking different God brothers to help me, you know, help me. One at one of the mats, he was put in charge of. They had printed, you know, Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta. He printed every day something was printed from the Bodhiya Math. So they had some periodical, and they asked Prabhupada to take charge of it, editing and all, and writing. And then, but they wouldn't give him, he said, we have to expand, this is a tiny little circulation. Let's double the circulation. And they're like, no, we don't have funds for that. And everything, no funds. And they actually would throw him out of the moth. You know, they wrote, wrote a very polite letter. Like, actually, the other moth, they would love to have your association there. And like, like they did, like imagine being not only no support, but not even wanted, you know, wherever he went. And um, 
and then he just was so determined. And when he was able to get the temple at Radha Damodar, that was wonderful. Again, five rupees a month rent for that room at Radha Damodar Temple. And then we all know about Sumati Maharaji, and I'll keep it short, and how he finally, finally gets passage to America and has two heart attacks on the ship. And like, and then finally, um, you know, the Agarwals, they were kind of embarrassed by him. You know, they, they put him up at the Y and, and uh, thought, you know, he's really unusual and everything. But of course they came to love him. But um, finally, finally, after great difficulty, he gets passage to America. Just like many of our friends here, they dreamt of when they could come to America. Maybe not for the same reasons, but um, she would probably like just to preach. So just one thing, he finally gets to stay with Dr. Mishra. And imagine she would probably, what is his life, his life, his preaching and speaking. And he said, you can sing, but no talking. Because as soon as he talked, he, you know, just uh, bumped the Mayavad philosophy. <laughs> and they wouldn't even let him speak. And then finally, finally, he gets his own tiny little room. And, and his, now his expenses are high, $70 a month in America. And the only way he can get it <coughs> is by selling his books on consignment. Okay, so we know um, we're so grateful, and anytime we think that we're in poverty or you know can't afford something, just remember we we don't know at all, and how if he wasn't so determined he wouldn't be here. Well, please. Please very dear Lord Krishna, having taken shelter of those feet, our respectful obeisance is on to you, as Krishna Master, so we just have our this morning. You are kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Day, of delivering the Western countries to be filled with impersonalism and Buddhism. Vishla Prabhupada, while I began writing this year's offering for you, I was at a loss of where to start, a lack of inspiration in my own shortages, and so I just began writing. And the first thing I wrote, was dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances on words to Srila Prabhupada. And then looking at the mechanical statement I've written down, I realized I wanted to thank you for teaching us sincerity. And a memory came to mind of reading one of your own disciples' recollections of the morning walk, in which they asked you, Srila Prabhupada, how do we become sincere? And you stated that sincerity is not a mechanical process. It's a statement, condition of the heart and we either are or not. And Srila Prabhupada, this brought to mind while I was quite young, doing my homework, reading Srimad Bhagavatam. I read it in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 17, that Krishna is seated in the heart of everyone as the benefactor of the truthful devotee. And I used to wonder what that meant, the truthful devotee. And an analogy came to mind, which was very impactful for me after some of the things I was seeing as a child. When, at that time, living very close to the Temple Shri Prabhupada, I used to see adults who would wear tilak, who would wear sometimes Gayatri threads and chant 16 rounds. And it was a quiet observation I would make that once they were no longer giving class, or once they were no longer on the altar, they would often speak in very harsh ways. And some of them would make very strong statements that were objectively not true and would have caused risks in the community that it was able to be seen that they were not true, they would then act harsher. And then at a young age, the Prabhupada began to wonder, how can someone who chants Hare Krishna act in this way? And so while I was writing your offering this year, an analogy came to my mind, which is that the Hare Krishna mantra is purifying. Just like when we get in the shower, the shower cleans out the dirt from us. But only if we're sincere, and only as in Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 17, it says, if we're truthful, but being truthful can be painful, and how to be truthful should go by. Because if I get in the shower, because I'm dirty, then the water will please 
purify me. But for the dirt to come off, it has to be visible first, and that's very embarrassing. And so I can stay in the shower for a long time, but if the dirt comes off and I put my hands over the dirt because I don't want anyone to see the dirt, then I can stay in the shower for a long time and remain dirty. And growing up in this movement, Shri Prabhupada, I remember when I was young hearing this and thinking it's so easy to be honest, but it's actually very hard and very painful as we get older and the purifying process is doing its job because these unpleasant things don't go away. But I have to first say out loud, yes, that dirt came from me. It doesn't just disappear. It's going away. But it did come from me. And it's very easy to fall into the mechanical process of chanting, ignoring the dirt, and then becoming so mechanical with everything that when I write your offering, Shri Prabhupada, I started with Pambo, AGTSPDL, Shri Prabhupada, oh, that's not sincere, that's mechanical. So it's a wonderful process, but when the scrubbing starts, sometimes it's a painful process. And I'm grateful to you for showing us, as you wrote in the purports of the Shishopanishad, an acharya is someone who doesn't just preach with their words, they preach with their actions. Thank you. This year I was wondering what to say and how to say it. Um, and Srila Prabhupada, really to just say how that Your be your example. Um, this gives my entire life meaning. That of my children. That of the community and school that we participate in. That there is not uh, a reality now that I would want to know outside of what you have given me. I I desire to just continue to be and always stay within the shelter of my guru and to, within the shelter of you and in your movement so that I can continue to develop my heart. This world, as you told us from the beginning, is full of void as we repeat every day. It's full of atheism. It's full of pain. It's full of suffering. It's full of, full of horror. And on one level, um, I've had enough. And on another level, I'm still here. <laughs> Um, fighting a good fight, as they say. Um, so I pray for your mercy to be able to chant, and as Prabhu said, chant sincerely and to grow and continue to develop. That's my own desire. And that for my children as well, that they can stay in the shelter and develop as well. So thank you so much. Hare Krishna. I'm just going to read my offering from last year because I don't have anything for this year. So It's the first time I wrote an offering, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, I, everyone probably knows that I usually serve at the New York Temple. So, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Vidalaya Shima Devakti Vedanta Swamini Dinamini Namaste Saraswati Devam Gauravani Pratarani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paskacha Dishitarani I offer my respectful obeisances unto His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada 
who is very dear to Lord Krishna, having taken shelter at his lotus feet. Our respectful obeisances are unto you, O spiritual master, servant of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami. You are kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Dev and delivering the Western countries, which are full of voidism and impersonalism. Dear Srila Prabhupada, today is your appearance day on this earth. You are the eternal associate of Radha and Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You gave us the process of finding our true self and our relationship with God by chanting the Maha Mantra. I can barely comprehend your mercy. You created a new reality in this harsh city of New York, the temple of Radha Govinda, where one can actually get a glimpse of the supreme absolute truth. It is important to live a life of indebtedness and gratefulness. When I am engaged in devotional service at the Radha Govinda temple, in the association of your disciples and grand disciples, under the protection of your teachings, engaged in the activities described in the Guru Vastakam, I am proud, profoundly grateful. You are my Lord, birth after birth. I'd like to read the offering that I wrote earlier and was put in Prabhupada tributes for I'll read that. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to you on your Vyas Puja celebration day. Perhaps on Tuesday, September 21st, 1965, the day after you arrived in Butler, Pennsylvania, Gopal Agarwal showed you the local newspaper, the Butler Eagle. The front page headline reported skirmishes between India and Pakistan on the eve of their signing a truce the next day. That would be Wednesday, September 22nd. The same day a feature article would appear reporting the arrival in Butler of the ambassador of Bhakti Yoga, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamiji, to enlighten English-speaking people regarding their relationship with God. When all other news reported over centuries by the Butler Eagle has long since faded from memory, this article about you, which is quoted in the Srila Prabhupada Lulamrita, will still be remembered for millennia. The Butler Eagle regularly published, quote, a prayer, close quote, on its front page. And on Tuesday, September 21st, it read, Our Heavenly Father, teach us the value of little deeds as well as bigger ones. Forgive us our neglectfulness when there have been worthwhile things to do. Too often we interpret our deeds in terms of our benefit. Help us to see that love is the motive for true service. This we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. This thoughtful little prayer was written by Mrs. Penny Ritz, a reporter who wrote the daily prayer for the Butler Eagle for many years, and who would the next day write the feature article about you, she would probably write. Mrs. Ritz interviewed you at the Agarwal's home, and whether she sensed it or not, because Vapu Association may or may not be appreciated, her prayer of the day before had received a quick reply. For you were the ideal person to help Mrs. Ritz and all of us, quote, see that love is the motive for true service, unquote. Your mission of, quote, reviving a people's God consciousness, unquote, as you described it to Mrs. Ritz, was grounded in love for your spiritual master and Sri Krishna. It was love manifested as duty that brought you to America just five days before this first article publicly announced your mission. This little prayer, published in a small town newspaper, received a big answer 
that I trust helped Mrs. Ritz and all others see that your motive of love manifested as true service could perform miracles by changing hearts, saving souls, and spreading Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement all over the world. With great respect, a servant of your servants honors you today. Prabhupada said to his disciples at least once, maybe more than once, that you are all the representatives of my spiritual master. And that always really struck me. But living in this community, I'm realizing what he meant. And you are all representatives of Srila Prabhupada for me. All of you who have so sincerely taken up Shul Prabhupada's mission, and like we were just hearing, a mission of love, you are all representatives of Shul Prabhupada. I used to regret, like some of you were also expressing, that I never got to meet Shul Prabhupada. I was born a year after he left. I felt like I landed on the Earth planet a year too late. <laughs> but over all these years of my life, I am seeing that Shil Prophet is very present. And I thank all of you for that. Because you have created the world that he envisioned. Thank you. I'm just so grateful for uh, for my parents and for your disciples and for everything you've left us. Being born in South Africa in a little town, we have a temple there, uh, like many other places around the world, uh, the Temple of Understanding where Shishi Radha Radhana uh, bless us. Um, and through the devotees' association and guidance, um, my Guru Maharaj, Giriraj Swami, uh, directed me to Vrindavan Gurukul, where I resided and uh, studied for a long time. And uh, your disciples' association and just the devotee community is um, the relish that we all desire all the time. It, uh, allows us to achieve um, our purpose in life. Always remember Krishna and never forget Him. Um, and I think this day of um, gratitude should be celebrated more often. Uh, gratitude should be shown by our actions and devotional service, but also should be verbalized. And it's uh, thoroughly uh, heart, heartfelt on my part, and I'm sure everyone else's part, the sharing of everyone today is just um, just bringing love and bringing uh, positive emotions within us uh, on our reflections about your life and so greatly appreciate it and uh, greatly appreciate being surrounded by such devotees and grateful for Bir Krishna Maharaj for creating a little version of Goloka Vrindavan here. Uh, this forest and the river behind reminds us of Mother Yamuna when I come here. And it's um, on the hill in front of the temple reminds me of Govardhan every time I drive here. So just ever so grateful to the community. Hare Krishna. So I, I think the easiest way to glorify Shiva Prabhupada is just to meditate on the mantras that we say to him. You're at the feet of Lord Vishnu, Krishna Prasthaya today. You are uh, spreading the message of Krishna on this earth. I mean, Saraswati Gita, I've thought about this a lot, how Sri Prabhupada is very faithful to his own guru. Often when he was asked, what is the secret to your success, he would just say that I have, I follow my spiritual master, I have faith in the whole world of Krishna. Uh, devoted to Sri uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Gauravani Pacharani, and he's very accurately representing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and bringing 
Krishna consciousness and the holy name and, and the science of rasa as taught by Mahaprabhu to the Trinitra Goswami, to the Sanatana Goswami, to the world. Here is Sesha Sundarabhi that he's defeating all impersonalism and voidism, Paschajanda Shacharya, especially in the Western countries. And of course, Prabhupada wanted us in America. Uh, I think America is still the leading country in the world. No, it actually is. If you travel the world, people still look up to our country, no matter how crazy and broken we make it is when we look at it. And I just see that there's so much interest in, in Krishna consciousness that came from Sri Prabhupada, even if it doesn't seem to come from him directly. So I was just reading a post by one girl who was brought up in the movement about how she's getting together with others for kirtan and none of the people that she's getting together with have anything to do with this kind of talk. And I thought, how is it that all these people are engaged in, in Krishna kirtan? Where did that come from? How did that start? They may not understand that it started from Sri Prabhupada, but it did. Um, and it, in my own life, I mean, I could say, well, there's certain things I got from my parents and my sisters and my community and my teachers, but really, every single thing I have in my life is social is Prabhupada. I see everything through Shiva Prabhupada. And, 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 and it's very hard for me to talk about how much I owe to Shiva Prabhupada because it's all pervasive and, and confidence. Okay. There's this very, very nice book. I just sort of put an advertisement out for the book. <laughs> and I'm going to leave a copy of it here. You can all read. It's Srila Prabhupada's tributes. <clears throat> it's offerings made by Srila Prabhupada's disciples in order of when they got the blood initiation. It's really, really interesting to read. And I've been reading along. As it was sung by Haridas, I read his offering here. In a very, very beautiful book. So, let me just read my humble, or not so humble. Well, <laughs> that's because I'm old. Not necessarily spiritually old, physically old. So, I'm going to skip some of the Sanskrit to make it short. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my prostrated obeisances in the dust of your lotus feet. All glory to your divine grace. I was recently reading Lord Kapiladev's instructions to his mother Devahuti in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, wherein he tells her that transferring one's attachments of this world to attachments for great souls is the secret to attaining Krishna consciousness. In this context, he also gives the qualities of those great souls. Uh, these are quotes from Bhagavatam. Every learned man knows very well that attachment for the material world Material, sorry, is the greatest entanglement for the spirit soul, but that same attachment, when applied to the self-realized devotees, opens the doors of liberation. The symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies, he is peaceful, he abides by the scriptures, and all his attachments are sublime. Such a sadhu engages in staunch devotional service to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections, such as family relationships and friendly acquaintances within this world. Engaged constantly in chanting and hearing about me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the sadhus do not suffer from material miseries because they are always filled with thoughts of my pastimes and activities. O oh, my mother, O oh, virtuous lady, these are the qualities of great devotees who are free from all attachment. You must seek attachment to such holy men, for this counteracts the pernicious effects of material attachment. Srila Prabhupada, you manifest all these saintly qualities to the highest degree. I am praying fervently at your feet to allow me to be attached to your, your Vani and Babu. I pray you live my life simply to hanker for your approval. Another quote. In conclusion, if a disciple is very serious to execute the mission of the spiritual master, he immediately associates with the Supreme Personality of Godhead by Vani or Vapu, this is the fourth canto of Bhagavatam, the story of Paranjana. This is the only secret, I'm just going to repeat this word again, this is the only secret of success of seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
instead of being eager to see the Lord in some bush of Vrindavan, while at the same time engaging in sense gratification, if one instead sticks to the principle of following the words of the spiritual master, he will see the Supreme Lord without difficulty. Srila Bilbamandal Thakur uh, therefore has said, If I am engaged in devotional service unto you, my dear Lord, then very easily can I perceive your presence everywhere. As far as liberation is concerned, I think that liberation stands at my door with folded hands, waiting to serve me. And with <coughs> excuse me, and all material conveniences of dharma, religiosity, artha, economic development, and common sense gratification stand with her. This is from the Krishna Karnamrita. <coughs> If one is a very highly advanced in devotional service, he will have no difficulty in seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If one engages in the service of the spiritual master, he not only sees the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but attains liberation. As far as material conveniences are concerned, they automatically come, just as the maid servants of the queen follow the queen wherever she goes. Liberation is no problem for the pure devotee and all material conveniences are simply awaiting him at all stages of life. Bhagavatam 4, 28, 51, purport. Signed, your servant, Vir Krishna Das Goswami. That's the main point. By developing attachment to Prabhupada's Vani and Vapu, then we get a taste for the holy name. And part of that attachment is when they have to we have time in a second. Part of that attachment is actually treating Srila Prabhupada's uh, sons, daughters, granddaughters, grandsons, great-grandsons nicely and be compassionate with each other. As Srila Prabhupada mentions in the uh, Upadesha Amrita that our Krishna conscious movement moves forward by the loving exchanges between the Vaishnavas, the Dati Pratikardati, Guyam Akyati Prichati. And this means that to actually feel love, not simply to do it ritualistically, to, to feel love and uh, desire to serve everyone related with Srila Prabhupada. As Krishna states, uh, someone who says he is my devotee is not my devotee, but someone who says he is devotee of my devotee is my devotee. That's from the Adi Purana. So we can say a similar thing about Srila Prabhupada. Someone who says he is Srila Prabhupada's devotee but uh, does not serve the devotees of Srila Prabhupada. It's not really Srila Prabhupada's devotee, but someone who is a devotee of Srila Prabhupada's devotee. That person is actually Srila Prabhupada's devotee. So thank you very much, all glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Uh, all right, so now we're going to do something in ceremony called Pushpanjali. Pushpanjali means the worship with pushpa or flowers. There's an interesting story. First time the devotees heard the word pushpanjali, you probably know the story. You know, the devotees didn't celebrate Prabhupada's appearance day properly. The Prabhupada said, wait, where's the pushpa or pushpanjali? And they thought Prabhupada meant pushpana rice. <laughs> so they so they prepared this, you know, fancy rice for Shiva Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, All right, let's do the actual celebration the next day, because they did it wrong the first day. So Prabhupada instructed us uh, that for every appearance, disappearance day of great souls, we should have this push punjali, which is the worship of flowers in which we <coughs> recite the Mangala Charna prayers responsibly. And after we're finished with the Mangala Charna prayers, we go over again to the Prabhupada's Pranam Mantras. And after reciting the two Pranam Mantras of Srila Prabhupada, we say this word, Ishapush Panjali. And each time I say that, you throw flowers at Srila Prabhupada's feet, try not to throw it at his face. And so that's going to be done nine times, three times three. In other words, after finishing the whole Mangala Charna, which, which won't take long, 
then we say Prabhupada's Pranam Mantras, Asha Pushpanjali three times, growing flowering. Then Prabhupada's Pranam Mantras, Asha Pushpanjali three times, growing flowers, and then third time. So please repeat. <coughs> Om Ganar, Om Ganar,
Krishna, Bhagavatarupa, Bhagavatarupa, Bhagavatara, Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam, Namami, Bhagavatam, Shaktika, Namah 
The divine grace is in Bhakti Vatan Yoga Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada Ki. The auspicious Vyasa Puja appearance day of Srila Prabhupada Ki. The divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanti Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Shri The lotus feet of our spiritual master are the only way by which you attain pure devotional service. I bow down to his lotus feet with great awe and reverence. By his grace, when we cross the ocean of material suffering and obtain the mercy of Krishna, my only wish is to have my consciousness purified by the words emanating from his lotus mouth. Attachment to his lotus feet is the perfection that fulfills all desires. He opens my dark and eyes and fills my heart with chances and love. He is my Lord, birth after birth. From him ecstatic pain emanates and body of ignorance is destroyed. The day of sickness seen as character. Our spiritual master is the ocean of mercy, the friend of the poor and the Lord and master of the yogis. Oh master, please be merciful unto us. Give us the shade of your lotus feet. Your fame is set all over the three worlds. We take shelter at your lotus feet. You look for our